Climate change is one of the most discussed topics of our time. I recently did a Google search and some of the common results include climate change is fictional, climate change is fake, not real. So I would like to talk about how we know that climate change is real. Uh, I'm doing a PhD in climate science in which I research environmental change by studying the oceans. As a paleoclimatologist, my job is to find out what the Earth's climate was like in the past. And I focus in on a warm period about three million years ago, when temperatures were higher, carbon dioxide levels was high, sea level were, was high, and there were no permanent ice caps in the Arctic. It was basically the image of the future that we all read about and fear. But conditions changed and the world cooled. And now we're experiencing global warming again, but why are we so concerned about a, global, uh, about, um, a warmer world if it's all happened before? Um, well, let's start by talking about how we can actually know what happened in the past. Instrumental records are fairly well kept for the last hundred years, but we want to know, for example, how much it rained in the Indian subcontinent three million years ago. Why do we want to know that? Well, because knowledge of a past warm period is the key to predictions about a future warm period in an area where two billion people are affected by changes in the rain pattern that they rely on for their sustenance and economy. But three million years ago, there were no instruments and there were no modern humans. There were nevertheless um, storytellers that can let us know what the world was like if we know where to look. My favorite ones are the foraminifera, and we find them in the oceans. They're tiny organisms that build shells out of the materials that exist in the waters. And when they die, their shells can be preserved for millions of years until some geologist drills into the ocean floor and brings the sediments hosting the foraminifera up to their lab. A foraminifera that lived near the surface of the ocean can tell us about surface conditions in a specific region. Uh, for example, uh, if the shell shows that the waters were fresh, that indicates heavy rains during the foraminifera's lifetime. Other foram shells can also tell us about broader global conditions, like how much ice was locked up in ice caps. And with this information, we can distinguish colder and warmer periods. Something um, like a foraminifera that allows us to reconstruct uh, climate conditions is called a climate proxy, and there are many such proxies. Foram shells and other proxies can also tell us about changes in atmospheric uh, carbon dioxide, the greenhouse gas that everyone is talking about. And there's a good reason for that. Carbon dioxide, um, a rise in carbon dioxide uh, is followed by a rise in temperature. So it's actually the main driver of global warming. Um, but is the current warming humanity's doing? How do we know that? Is a CO2 rise just a recent phenomenon or has it happened before? Well, we look into the geological record with the help of uh, climate proxies and uh, we see that indeed um, warmer and colder periods have happened without humans having anything to do with it. There's also an ice core record, so a long ice core taken from the Antarctic ice sheet that gives us effectively a direct measurement of CO2 for the past 800,000 years. And this shows us um, carbon dioxide typically increasing for about 50,000 years and then decreasing for another 50,000 years. However, the same carbon dioxide increase that used to take 50,000 years has now happened in the last 50 years. In 2019, we reached the highest carbon dioxide levels in three million years. That's the highest carbon dioxide levels in all of human history. And a couple of years from now, we will most probably reach the highest levels in 16 million years, when there were no ice caps uh, in the Arctic. The ongoing rate of change 
of greenhouse gases and temperature is unprecedented. And we know this because we have detailed records um, going back tens of millions of years. Um, we also know the consequences of global warming. Weather events become extreme, heat waves, hurricanes, wildfires become more common, like what we're seeing in the Amazon, California, and other regions. Um, sea level rise will force people out of their homes, and natural disasters lead to millions and millions of climate refugees. This is why people are justifiably starting to worry, and uh, this is why knowledge of past climate is so important. Historians say that the past is the key to the future, right? Well, foraminifera and other climate proxies are our window into the past, which in turn inform scientists about what we can expect in the future. Knowing the past allows us to make informed and educated decisions about the future, how to manage or even prevent disasters. The image of the future that we fear has happened before, but the changes weren't nearly as rapid and there were no people in those days to worry about it anyway. We're now experiencing the biggest extinction event since 66 million years ago when the dinosaurs went extinct. Except this time, it's us doing it to ourselves and to the rest of the ecosystem. We are past the point of being able to um, save the world, so to speak, by just recycling or turning lights off. Now what we need is radical action. And we are seeing some of it. Activism and demonstrations, people of all ages creating awareness, um, uh, putting pressure on companies and governments, many governments making the effort to reduce their emissions. Renewable energy usage is growing every year. Spain is the worldwide leader in solar power. Denmark leads the world in wind power. Over half of Sweden's energy usage comes from renewable sources. And in the UK, for the first time ever this summer, more electricity was generated from renewables than from fossil fuels. 18 countries and 34 major companies have committed to a net zero carbon emission before 2050. Suriname and Bhutan are already there. Norway, Sweden, United Kingdom and France have put it into law. Chile, New Zealand and Fiji have proposed legislation. But everybody has to aim for the target because sooner or later it's going to affect everybody. Climate change is the biggest challenge of our time. Unfortunately, we are causing it and we need to solve it. There is a scientific consensus about this because we have a huge amount of evidence in the geological record that we do have access to, such as those little foraminifera. And using this information wisely, we can hopefully all contribute towards a more sustainable and desirable future. A future that we don't fear, but actually look forward to. Thank you.